Hey, Greg is here. Today we will introduce a basic interaction in 3D space. Let's make some object on the scene. Let's say it is a box or a chest. Because this object will not be moving, let's make it as a static body. Let's name it into the chest. Add mesh instance and collision shape to our chest. Select our chest and create and add a new script called interactable object. When I open my script, you might notice a change. If you don't have Visual Studio code installed, check the playlist of this tutorial on how to set up Visual Studio code for Godot. Or you can find a guide on how to set it up on my channel. Good. Let's use interface to determine which class is describing an interactable object. Create a new interface, iInteractable. Define a method inside the interface. All classes who inherit from this interface must have the implementation of this method, making it possible to call interact on all classes marked as iInteractable and inherit from this interface on our interactable object, making interactable object interactable. Implement the interact method and let's post something into debug log. Good. Now we need to use Raycast system to detect object in front of us. For this, we will use shape cast 3D node. Be mindful that when we are adding new functionality through node on our character, we should do it on his scene. So all instances of this scene will inherit the changes. Add shape cast 3D node. Make sure it is in front of a character, which will allow us to define some kind of shape which we will use as our interactable area in front of the character. So if the interactable object is inside this shape, we're supposed to be able to interact with this object. Don't forget to save this scene. And now let's open player input. Add a new field for interact area of type shape cast, so we can reference and use it to determine do we interact or not with an object. Then we have installed Visual Studio code to easily do tricks like this. We can rename the name of the function process input into process move input. And it will automatically update it in all places in your code. Nice feature to have in big projects. Then make process interact input method, where we will be checking if player pressed interact button. If he did press it, call and create new method called interact. Inside interact, first we will introduce an exit gate. Exit gate is used to stop an execution of the method according to some kind of condition. For example, in our case, if our interact area has no collisions at all, that means there is definitely no possibility of having any interactable object inside our interactable area. 
and we don't need to continue execution of interact method because there is nothing to interact with. Then get count of how many collisions we have inside our interact area. We will use this variable to cycle through all colliders inside the interactable area by using getCollider. We will check if collide is of a type of a node. And if this node has an interactable interface, we will call interact. If we called interact, it means we found our interactable object in front of us, so we don't need to continue the execution of interact method. So simply call return to stop execution of the interact method. Good. Add interact input into the input map. Build the project so we will be able to reference the shape cast on the player character scene. Let's rename shape cast into interactable area. Never forget to save the scene after applying the changes. With this done, if we launch the game right now, if I approach the cube and try to interact with it, it will only be interactable if I approach it from behind. This is happening because while our direction of movement does follow the camera, the model itself, which has the interactable area, doesn't match the direction of movement. So the forward direction of our character always stays the same. Let's separate camera from our character. Open the third person camera script. Create a field called target of type node 3D. And let's immediately reference the target of our 3D camera, which is going to be our character. And to make our camera follow the character, in the process, copy the target position into the position of the camera. Let's test this. Good. So to make the object interact with the interactable object more naturally when he is facing it, when we move, we want to rotate our object to face the direction it is moving. Open player input. Inside the process, move input. We will call and create new method called process rotation. Inside, we will calculate the rotation of the node on the y-axis, only left and right, based on the input vector. It is done through calculating arc tangents of x and z vector. Assign the rotation back to our node. Let's test this. As you can see, if I press anything, my object will be facing the direction it is moving, but when I stop, it snaps back into default rotation. To make our rotation stay persistent after the player stopped moving, we simply need to check is there any form of input from the player. If there is some kind of input, 
then we will be rotating our character. Otherwise we will do nothing and because of that the rotation will not be changed and our character will keep facing the direction it stopped moving. Good. As you can see, if I face the interactable object and press interact, it will report that yes indeed we have interacted with the object. Let's add some indicators of where is well forward of our character in form of googly boxy eyes. Don't worry, this model will not stay for far too long with us. Soon we will replace it with something more proper. Thank you everyone for watching, thank you for Patreon support, comment, subscribe, see you in the next episode.